Now that we've proven Goodstein's theorem, we want to show that it really is difficult to prove in some precise way. Goodstein's theorem says that for each n, the Goodstein sequence starting with n terminates. There is some i so that g i of n is zero. We can define the Goodstein function, big G of n, to be this value of i. Big G of n is the number of steps it takes for the Goodstein sequence starting with n to reach zero. And what we'll show is that the Goodstein function is a very big function. It grows very, very fast. To do this, we'll define a family of functions called the fast-growing functions, and then prove that the Goodstein sequence grows even faster. These functions will be indexed by our ordinals, by the ordinals below epsilon zero. So for each ordinal alpha below epsilon zero, we'll have a function h alpha. In fact, we'll start with functions that don't grow so quickly. h0 will be the identity, h0 of n is equal to n. h1 of n will be n plus 1. And more generally, hk of n, where k is a natural number, will be just n plus k. More generally, we'll think of h alpha as representing the operation of adding 1 alpha times, but we'll have to figure out what it means to add one an ordinal number of times. What should happen is that each time we add one, we should decrement the ordinal alpha. So h alpha plus one of n will be h alpha of n plus one. And more generally, when alpha is a limit ordinal, we want h alpha of n to be h beta of n plus one for some beta less than alpha, and we'll have to pick which ordinal beta is, and which ordinal beta is might depend on the value of n. So for each non-zero ordinal below epsilon zero, we pick a sequence of ordinals, which we call the fundamental sequence. For example, the fundamental sequence of omega will be the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. We'll write these with brackets. So formally, we'll say that omega bracket n is n, omega bracket 2 is 2, and so on. Similarly, the sequence approximating omega times 2 is going to be omega, omega plus 1, omega plus 2, and so on. So omega times 2 bracket n is omega plus n. The sequence approximating omega squared is omega, omega times 2, omega times 3, and so on. Remember our convention for writing ordinals? We write ordinals as sums of terms, and we put the terms in decreasing order. And in particular, when we write gamma plus omega to the alpha, we mean omega to the alpha is the smallest term in this ordinal. When alpha is zero, so this is gamma plus omega to the zero, so gamma plus one, gamma plus one bracket n will just be gamma for every n. And when alpha is greater than zero, gamma plus omega to the alpha bracket n will be gamma plus n copies of omega to the alpha bracket n. For example, if we want to find omega to the omega bracket n, in this case, this is zero plus omega to the omega. Gamma is zero and alpha is omega. So this is omega to the omega bracket n added together n times. Omega bracket n is just n, so this is omega to the n plus omega to the n, etc., or omega to the n times n. You might have expected that omega to the omega bracket n was going to be omega to the n rather than omega to the n times n. It mostly doesn't matter. There are lots of valid choices of fundamental sequences, and they're basically equivalent. This choice turns out to work well for us because it's going to line up nicely with the construction of the Goodstein sequence. But in general, what matters is the fundamental sequence should be a non-decreasing sequence that approximates alpha from below. And there's also a technical condition that the fundamental sequence should itself not be too complicated or shouldn't encode a function that is already growing very, very quickly. And when one writes down a technical definition of what a fundamental sequence must have, it has to satisfy a certain computability property. But our choice of fundamental sequences is one of many 
valid, reasonable choices. Then we can define our functions h alpha. We say that h0 of n is n, and when alpha is greater than 0, h alpha of n will be h alpha bracket n of n plus 1. So we add 1 to n, and then we use n to tell us which smaller ordinal to look at. We can verify what these functions are for some values of alpha. For example, h3 of n is h3 bracket n of n plus 1, which is h2 of n plus 1, which is h2 bracket n plus 1 of n plus 2, and so on, and we get n plus 3. h omega of n is h omega bracket n of n plus 1, so that's h n of n plus 1, which is equal to 2n plus 1. So these early functions aren't so impressive. But as the ordinal alpha gets bigger, they start increasing much more rapidly. h omega plus omega of n is h omega plus n of n plus 1, which is 4n times 3. And in general, h omega times k of n is going to be about 2 to the k times n. And then h omega squared of n is going to be h omega times n of n plus 1, so it's at least around 2 to the n times n plus 1. And this iteration idea continues. h omega squared times k is going to be 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the n plus 1 with k exponents in here. And then h omega cubed of n is going to be the iteration of that h omega cubed of n is a bit more than a tower of n powers of 2. So this is sometimes called the tower exponential function. And h omega to the fourth is an iteration of that, repeating the tower exponential operation n plus 1 times. This is sometimes called a Wowser function, and this is already bigger than the functions we most commonly encounter in mathematics. So h omega is multiplying by 2, h omega squared iterates multiplying by 2, which is an exponential, h omega cubed is the iteration of that, the tower exponential, and above all of these is h omega to the omega, which is repeating the iteration process n times. So the bigger n is, the more we iterate. And this is roughly what's called the Ackermann function. And omega to the omega is not that big, so these just keep going. h omega to the omega times 2 is essentially applying the Ackermann function twice. And h omega to the omega plus 1 is iterate the Ackermann function, apply the Ackermann function n times to n plus 1. It's hard to even say anything concrete about bigger functions, so h omega to the omega to the 7 h omega to the omega to the omega to the omega, except to note that these functions just keep getting bigger, and so even the Ackermann function looks tiny compared to these later functions. I should note here, my indexing is a little non-conventional. It's more common to define the fast-growing functions in a slightly different way, so the function that other people would call f alpha is basically what I call h omega to the alpha. But since Whenever alpha is less than epsilon 0, omega to the alpha is also less than epsilon 0. We reach the same functions, just at slightly different ordinals. And I've made this choice because it's going to make our definitions line up smoothly with the Goodstein function. Ultimately, what we want to prove is that for every alpha less than epsilon 0, the Goodstein function grows faster. There is an n so that for all m greater than or equal to n, h alpha of m is less than g of m. So it might take the Goodstein function a little while to catch up when alpha is very large, but eventually the Goodstein function overtakes all of these fast-growing functions.